the ASPX tree view is primarily used for navigation purposes, and you can data bind it to anything that has hierarchical data. So any object that implements the I hierarchical enumerable or I hierarchical data source types can be bound to the ASPX tree view. So I'll start with the blank page and I'll drop an ASPX tree view onto the page. Now you can find this in the toolbox under DX 10.2 navigation and layout. I'll double click on the ASPX tree view and I'll drop that onto my form and then I'm going to add a data source. So through the smart tag I'm going to select choose data source and click new data source and here we have the option to use a sitemap or one of the ASPX sitemap data source controls. I'm going to use an XML file because I have an XML file that contains my hierarchical data. Now I've already put the file in my app data folder and it's called help nav. Now this help nav file is a subset of some of the help documentation that we have. Now I'm going to need an XPath expression to look at the actual information in the help nav. So first let's take a look. I'm going to click OK so that I can show you the help nav file. Now here we can see there's some help information. So here we have ASPX callback, its members, and some help URLs, as well as a title and node image types. So for the ASPX tree view, what I want to do is I want to get at just this information and display the title and maybe even show a helpful image. So let's go back to the ASPX tree view page. And in the XML data source, I'm going to click the smart tag and configure the data source again and set the XPath expression for namespace and everything after that first namespace so that it only returns a subset of that XML data. Now, we can see right now it only is returning what's called class, and it's not giving me the title. Now, what I have to do is I have to set up the ASPX tree view to tell it what I want to display here. So I'm going to click on the properties, go to the ASPX tree view, and under the data category, we'll find all the necessary data fields. Now here, I can manually define what my text field it is that I want to display. So in this case, I want to display the title for the text field, and for the navigation URL field, I'm going to use the help URL. And since I also have an image associated with it, I'm going to set the image URL field to the node type image. Now, if I didn't have these already uh, mapped, the ASPX tree view can find them if our data source contained fields that were called text, image, URL, navigate URL, name, and so forth. Now, we can see that right after I defined these fields, the ASPX tree view was able to find them from the help nav and already display them. Now, you can see that's also displaying the images, and that's because it's picking them up from a folder that I've already created. Now, if we look at the help nav and we take a look at the node type image field, we've already defined the location of the images. So, they have to be in a subfolder called tree view images help nav. And here, I've already defined that structure. So, in their tree view images, help nav, the individual nodes will pick up on the images that I've placed there. Now, let's take a quick look at the ASPX tree view. When I first run this, I want to be able to expand it to the very first depth. So what I'll do is rather than just showing these items, I'm going to override the uh, page load property here. So I'll double click on this page. And here, I'm going to call the data bind and a special method called expand to depth. So the first thing I'll do is I'll check to make sure that this is not a post back, and then I'm going to call the tree views data bind and expand it to the very first depth so that all the nodes are going to show at least to the first level. Now let's take a quick look at this in action. Now here I got an error because I'm referencing a control name that doesn't exist. So I want to verify that the tree view is actually what I called it. Now here, I want to call this by the name I've given it on the other page, which is ASPX tree view one, and I'll change it here as well. Now just to verify, and yes, I can see that I've called it ASPX tree view one. Now take, let's take a quick look at this in action. And here I can see that I've got my ASPX tree view displaying the images as well as the proper title and the proper link URL as well as expanding to the first depth level. Now let's say I wanted to make the very top levels bolded. So if I wanted to bold ASPX callback, callback clients at events, callback event args, what I can do is use a particular event of the ASPX tree view that allows us to customize nodes after it's been data bound. So if I click on the ASPX tree view, I'll take a look at the events and it's called node data bound. And this event allows us to customize things like the content as well as the look of the node once it's been data bound. So I'll double click to override it. 
Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to grab the actual data node. So first thing I do is I grab the E instance and go to its data item and set it as an XML node. Now, because I'm using XML node, I want to make sure that I've got the proper class declared in here. I'll be sure to call the using system.xml. Now, once I have the data node and I and I now once I have the data node, I can verify if it is at the top level which is called class. Now, if we take a look at our help nav again, we know that the top levels are called class. And if they are, we're going to set their text font style to bold. Now, let's take a quick look at this in action. Now, we can see that we got the ASPX callbacks top levels bolded as well.